Meredith from ProjectorSewing.com. I'm really excited for our tutorial today. We're going to be creating sewing mock-ups in Inkscape. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get Inkscape pulled up. I'm not going to change any of the document properties. Um, just leave it how it is. You can change the page size any way you want. But let's get started. And what you're going to need is a line drawing of a pattern. Now, lots of pattern companies offer line drawings. Today, I'm going to use the Lowland Kids hoodie. It's a free pattern. And we they have a line drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a screenshot of that. There is a written tutorial on this if you do not know how to take a screenshot on your computer. Um, I'm going to use the snippet tool and I'm just going to, and this is on Windows, on Mac it's a little bit different, uh, just take a copy of that line drawing. I'm going to copy it and we're going to paste it right here into Inkscape. So I just pushed control V and I'm going to slice it down in here. Let's do control Z because I didn't size that down, keep it the same. I don't want to change the dimensions of it. So press and hold control when you drag and drop it so it doesn't change the dimensions of your picture at all. Okay, so I have my line drawing in here and what we're going to do next is we are going to, let me move my picture down here. We're gonna go ahead and go to path trace bitmap okay and it's going to come up here on the right hand side trace bitmap and the threshold is what we're going to be looking for so i'm going to increase it until my picture starts showing up at the bottom you see my line drawing starts showing up here in the bottom and usually around seven or eight is when you start to see it fully um on this one i want to make it as dark as i can but if I go too far, you can see, oh, it turns completely black when we go to one. That would be way too far. There's a lot of noise created it when it's this high. So you want just the lines drawn. You want to make sure it's gotten all the lines. Um, and then push apply. Okay. Now I've got an image traced and I'm going to bring that down. When I click and drag, that's usually the original image at the bottom. We won't need that anymore, but just in case you're not sure if that's the original or not, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, select the image here. With the image selected here, we're going to go to Path and Break Apart. Path Break Apart, everything's turned black. That's perfect. That's how we want it. Now, in order to see the different sections so it's easier to pull them apart, deselect the image here and then select it again. And we're going to create a fill color. You can really choose any color you want. I like gray or something around there. And then we are going to push, we're going to push a lower section to bottom end. So it's actually this button right here you can see it says lower section and then you can see the traced outlines okay I can do it again I'm going to show you again select the image we're going to choose a color other than black usually a contrasting color so you can see the lines and lower section to bottom end now we have our two images now if you want to create a lot of different uh, mock-ups you could copy copy that all and duplicate it um, if you want to have more options um, we don't need our original image, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Let's zoom in here now so that you can see what we have. If I select different areas of this pattern now, I can see that they're all separate. Now what you can do is you can click shift and click all the areas that you want a certain color. And if you just want a plain color, like I wanted a uh, navy blue, I would go ahead and click uh, navy on there. Okay. That is really easy to do with a solid color. Um, let me show you again. Let's say I want the middle section to be, oh, this pinkish here. I would just select it and do that. Again, you can do it with all the areas that you want different colors. <laughs> I'm just making random colors here for now. Um, but that that's how you would do that. But let me show you if you have a fabric in mind online. 
that you want to put the pattern on here for your mock-up. What you need to do is you need to go online and or you could take a picture of your fabric um, and use that as well. If you have fabric at home that you're using, then go ahead and get fabric um, at home. Today I'm going to use my friend uh, Brittany Lane's design. She's on Spoonflower, uh, if you see any of these designs that you like. She's also on Raspberry Creek Fabrics. And so she has these fun, uh, like Alice in Wonderland rabbits and uh, frog and toad and flowers. She has so many fun designs. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing something with her abominable snowman. They're like way down here, I think. Let's see, let's get down. These, her ab abominably adorable dancing yetis. I'm definitely going to do something with that. But today I'm going to use these Regency rabbits that she has up here at the top. And we're just going to uh, create a pattern with that. So again, I'm going to take my snippet tool and you're just going to take an image of that fabric sample. Or you could copy and paste it from uh, if you took a picture at home on your computer, just save it and you can open it up and you can use that as well. Let's go back to Inkscape now. And I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, fabric sample in. Okay. I'm going to zoom out just so I have a little bit more work room here to work with. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it. Now, you could go ahead and just uh, put this into your pattern now, but I do like to scale it a little bit. And in order to scale your pattern down, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Object, and then pattern, objects to pattern, okay? Now it's gonna create this as a, a pattern. So we're gonna click it again, we're gonna use the node tool and I'm going to take an arrow up in the corner and it's, I'm gonna bring it in and it's gonna scale it down. Now my image wasn't very good, I got some white in my image and that's why it has it. Um, it's not gonna bother me for now, I'll just leave it. And it's a little guesstimating on what size scale is gonna be right um, for yours. So just keep that in mind, a little guesstimating on there. It's not gonna be exact. Go back to your selector tool and let's zoom in here a little bit more. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select the pieces of um, the fabric that I want to be out of um, this fabric. So let's say here that I want the main part of this one to be that and the hood as well. And I'm going to have to zoom in to get the small parts of the hood. Push shift and select all the parts that you want to be of that fabric. Okay. So shift and select all the parts that you want to make that fabric. Okay. Then we're going to go to path union. That makes it all one piece. I'm gonna grab that and I'm going to bring it over here. It went underneath my fabric. So let's go ahead and bring it up to the top, just like that. Now we're gonna select the fabric as well. So I push shift and select so I have both uh, the fabric and those pattern pieces selected and go to object, clip, set clip. And it's clipped it so that the fabric is right where I had it on there. You're going to drag it back. And there it is. I place it right on top. Oh, it's looking cute so far. Okay, so now I want another fabric that goes with that one. And so I'm going to pull up my fabric here again. I'm going to use uh, the fabric right here. Get my snipping tool. Create a new snippet. And I'm going to try to do it without getting it. Uh, let's try it again. I didn't like that I got, um, I, I was trying to not get any white in my snippet here as best I can, <laughs> as best you can. Again, it's, it's not going to be perfect. If you want to get as perfect as you can, you can do that. I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to go to object pattern, objects to pattern, then go to my node tool and I can adjust the size, um, what might look like it's the correct size for 
this piece here. Okay, now I'm going to select the pieces that I want to make that color. So I want to do this one and this one. Oh, I forgot to put shift. And here. And maybe I'll make the cuffs as well on that. And maybe if I get in here, the binding here, I want to get the binding right around the hood. So I'm going to zoom in here and see if I can get it clicked there and deselected all that. Okay. Okay, and maybe I want to do the pocket that too. It's really totally up to you. Path, union, okay, made it all one. And I'm gonna click, oh no, it didn't, did it get it? It didn't make them, it did, there it did, it did make them a union here. And now we're gonna go, oh, I didn't bring it forward yet. I'm forgetting steps here. Bring it forward to the top layer so you can see your pattern pieces. Select the the fabric as well. Then go to object, clip, set clip. It's cut it out. And here we are. I can fix it. I'm just gonna scroll over here a little bit and zoom in so I can see it lined up a little bit as best I can. You know, for mock-up purposes, it's going to be okay. So, and there I have that so far. I can see that. Now, you can do it as another one. You can make as many uh, different possibilities as you want. Um, I didn't fill in the back hood here. Now, you could just do it a solid color, you can go back and it's going to be that same color. If you're going to do a lining a different color, um, but that's a fun way to do it. Let me show you some examples of other ones that I did so you can just uh, see some more examples. All right, so here's some other examples. This is from knitfabric.com, but you can see I've done several different variations of the fabric. I even did a panel so you can see how a panel looks. I mixed some solid colors and different fabric choices, but I was able to scale them and try out a few different options so I could see which one I liked best before sewing it. You could also maybe submit this to clients if you're designing something uh, for a client. Um, just uh, some few tips. It's kind of fun to play around with. If you have any questions, make sure to shoot them below um, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please uh, like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you so much for joining me today from projectorsewing.com. Bye.